Hello everyone, welcome to Chasing the Murderer and today we are going to be talking about one of the most prolific, most talked about cases or trials that coming out started this week. It's the case involving the doomsday mother Lori Vallow and her husband Chad Daybell. There are four deaths involved with this case including her two children Tylee and JJ. And at the beginning of the story, there was media reporters chasing this couple, trying to find out answers as to where J.J. and Tylee might be, because for a while they were considered just missing, at least until the summer of 2020, when they discovered a gruesome sight. When they discovered that J.J. and Tylee, well, they were buried in the backyard of Chad Daybell's home in Rexburg, Idaho. So I wanted to go over that stuff with some of the new people that might be tuning in because I know that most of the people that follow this channel, well, they know this story inside out and then some. So we're not going to be able to watch this trial simply because the defense team fought to get the cameras out of the courtroom and they won. So all we get is uh, witnesses who have been in the courtroom that's going to share what they see in the courtroom and um, these sketches. Now because this trial has gained worldwide attention, um, a lot of people are following this and they were worried about whether or not they would get a, you know, a, not a free trial, a fair trial if they remained in Rexburg. So it was actually the judge said you know what we're going to move it to ada county which is about 200 miles east of the city of boise to boise let me correct that so a lot of people are thinking where are we going to ever get it here because at one point these cases were joined um lori and chad daybell but now they're severed and lori is supporting her speedy trial just this monday we had a jury pool come in. Actually, they had summoned around 1,800 potential jurors where they were required to answer a 20-page questionnaire. The goal here is to find jurors that believe that they can be fair. They'll ask these jurors, our potential jurors, questions, whittle them down to 12. Eventually, I think it's going to be around 16. They're going to have a few alternates. They expect that this jury selection should take up to a couple of days or more, and trial is expected to go around eight weeks or so. So it is said that Lori is being charged with three killings, at least for this state, and suspected to be charged for another in Arizona. Her autistic adopted son, J.J. Vallow, Tylee Ryan, which is her teenage daughter, and then her new husband, Chad Daybell's wife, Tammy Daybell. If you're not familiar with this case, you can check out my older videos and catch up, especially Light Beyond the Grave, but that's a really long version. By around 4 p.m. yesterday, the third panel of jurors were brought in and, well, three have been excused. Prosecutors will continue to ask them questions so Rob would ask a few questions to some of these potential jury members. Questions like, um, if seeing an autopsy photo that could be emotionally charged would hinder their decision if no one objects. Another question that they ask if, as a parent, if um, she were to tell her kids to stay away from the cookie jar and came in to see cookie particles on their child's face, would it be reasonable to assume that the child had eaten the cookie? So this is how one of the prosecuting attorneys is trying to get the analogy around of hinting how to deal with circumstantial evidence that they'll be showing in the courtroom. Their goal was to get around 42 potential jurors out of that 1,800, and once that happens, the others will be dismissed. And from there, they're working on getting down to 12 jurors and six alternates. So we're all wondering, you know, who doesn't know about the Lori Vallow case? Well, guys, you would be surprised. There's a lot of people who do not follow true crime, much less this case. 
A few reporters have been in Ada County talking to people in the area, ask them if they're familiar with the Lori Vella case, and thus far there's been several people who are not familiar with the case. So far what I've learned is one of the main things that they're talking about with these jurors are the autopsy photos, which are going to be horrifying, definitely. People are going to finally find out what might have caused the deaths of these two beautiful kids. Because they're underage and they're children, this is a very touchy subject, you know, for the court, for the world. There's a chance that we may find out the exact deaths of the three victims, Tammy Daybell, Tylee Ryan, and J.J. Vallow, but there's also a chance you may not find out a reason for the death is what I'm hearing, at least for one of the victims. I'm not certain if that is true or if it's just rumor, but I guess we'll find out shortly. For most of us following this case, we've been waiting a very long time to find out what the cause of death was for all three of these victims. Four, we know what happened to Charles Vallow. So a lot of this um, trial is going to be based on circumstantial evidence as well as a few other things um, that they're not sharing with us. Then we have also witness testimonies. So one of the prosecutors, Smith, also asked the jury questions like, well, she asked several questions in this uh, topic, basically whether or not jurors would be able to convict, some, convict someone based on circumstantial evidence and if they could convict someone based on Idaho law for conspiracy if they didn't commit every single part of this crime. So this is key here because we know a lot of people are suspecting or think that Alex Cox might have been the one that pulled off the majority of what ha well the demise of these victims it is suspected that they believe that Lori Vello well she's kind of like the Charlie Manson in this case suggesting creating and barking out the orders and well so yeah that's pretty important let's just say that Lori Vello had nothing to do with the kids demise physically Depending on the evidence that they present and how they present it, do you think this can, you know, persuade the jurors to be a little less hard on Lori? Or will that matter? So we're hearing that, you know, prosecutors have some evidence that pretty much shows that Lori Vallow knew exactly what was happening with several of these deaths. I know that some of the questions that they were asking was a little scary. I don't know about for you guys, but Smith also asked the jurors if they could believe an expert who knows the manner of death the victim uh, of the victim was a homicide, but cannot determine exactly how the victim died. So is that going to be tough for them to, you know, judge on? Especially if they don't know this case. I mean, can you imagine coming into this case and not knowing what's going on? And the only thing you have to go by is what prosecutors and defense have. One thing that many of the, well, the people defending Lori and then the prosecutors, they're wondering if true crime television is going to affect how they see the actual evidence. All you have to do is type in Lori Vallow's name in YouTube or even anywhere. And there's going to be tons and tons of research on her opinions, rumors, you name it. It's there. So here we are. We're in day three of jury selection. Can you believe it? So around 5.30 p.m. yesterday, they said the final potential jury was about, they were down to 30 people. So they were making some progress. A lot of people were worried that this would be difficult to do. So Nate Eaton from East Idaho News, well, he got a lucky break when it comes to finding this couple in Hawaii. He got some tips. This um, made it easy for him to 
to pull in more tips. So he was able to get a lot of the scoop on this case before people even knew what was really going on. And Nate's been at the courthouse in Ada County trying to cover this the best he could. Now that you know that media is not allowed in the courtroom, and this is devastating. You got also the grandparents of J.J. Vallow, who are also witnesses and victims in this case, that are struggling to be able to remain in the courtroom during this trial. That's been devastating. They had to hire an attorney, which is smart. They needed an attorney on hand the whole entire time, in my opinion, because you just never know what's going to happen with this case. According to Nate Eaton, he got out there yesterday at 9 a.m. He said it was pretty quiet, but he expects that by today they should have um, a jury. He walked in front of the courthouse showing the media, media tents that were there. There wasn't that many, actually, but he expects once... Um, opening statements begin well you're going to start seeing a lot more media so the courtroom is on the fourth floor and according to nate he says they're sitting down on the lower levels well in an observing room where the media is you know putting together the stories to keep us updated on this trial now once the trial actually starts he says that several media can go into the courtroom as long as they got the reservation to do so where they will watch from an overflow room so they're saying that it's open to the public it's just not open to the cameras and it's based on reservation but there's a chance that the woodcocks may not be able to even sit in that courtroom which is insane so hopefully um prosecutors will probably put them on a stand first get their witness testimony over possibly opening the doors to where they can get into this um, trial we're still waiting on judge boyce to give his ruling on whether or not Kay, you know and larry are allowed are qualified to be victims grandparents attached to one of the victims jj vallow so you got a lot of people from around the world that are interested in this case from Ireland, the UK. It's just insane. And they're able to keep up with the, you know, what the Woodcocks are going through here. A lot of people realize how Lori Vella works and that this was a, an attempt to continue to a, attack the Woodcocks and make their life difficult. This is something she was doing um, before all this. When the Woodcocks were trying to get the investigators and police to help them save J.J. from this happening. But didn't, they weren't able to be successful at that. That's because Lori Vallow was using those loopholes, jumping state to state, and lying and manipulating. Until finally, she achieved her goal. A lot of people are thinking, how does she really think she was going to get away with all this? Especially since the Woodcocks were pushing so hard to see J.J. Vallow. Well, don't forget, Brandon Boudreaux was part of this group that was pushing investigators to look into Lori. Something wasn't right. That uh, what happened to Charles Vallow wasn't um, defense to Alex Cox or Lori Vallow. It was straight up murder. You mustn't forget that uh, Brandon Boudreau was shot at in front of his home. If you're not familiar with the story, Brandon Boudreau is, well, he was married to Melanie, po uh, her name is M Melanie Pawaski now, but it was Mel Melanie Boudreau at the time. That is Lori Vallow's niece. So there is so much craziness in this story. It's just insane. So you have a lot of people out of Rexburg, Idaho, who are watching the story very closely. They are ready to see justice come for especially these two children and their community a family member, Tammy Daybell. So remember, both Lori Vallow Daybell and Chad Daybell have pled not guilty. 
and they are dealing with, you know, theft charges, so conspiracy charges, murder charges, and hopefully a lot of people will start to see, you know, some closure, finally, because you got to remember, those two kids are still not laid to rest. Tammy Daybell, she was laid to rest. They ruled her death at first, natural causes, eventually ended up exhuming her body, doing more tests, where they become more suspicious. In fact, a lot of us are waiting to hear, you know, what they say she died of. I think Tylee Ryan's going to be the one that they won't have really any answers for, simply because of how they found her. If you kept up with this case, you know that it wasn't, it, it was, it was just bits and pieces. And people have speculated, you know, how they might have taken the life of this lady, young lady. And some of them believe that she might have been shot or poisoned. So we have no idea what happened. We can only hope that the family and victims of the people that have passed away in this case will get some sort of answer here soon. I got to run, guys. Thank you so much for your support and I love you guys miss you guys so much hope you're all doing great and right now dealing with mic issues and internet issues so doing the best we can on this don't forget about our missing girls see you guys soon